Ready? Yeah. <laughs> What's up everyone and welcome to Coffee with Ola. Today I'm extremely happy to have Isan or Vegard here of uh, a lot of bands, his own bands, Emperor, everyone, welcome. Thank you so much, very happy to be here. Awesome, we had uh, such a good like intro uh, thing here you, where we were walking around the office mm -hmm. and uh, just talking a lot and uh, you, you seem, we, it seems like we're on a very same kind of maybe Scandinavian level on a, or on terms with a lot of things. I think so. And um, <laughs> just to kind of like uh, break the ice a little bit, you uh, you just yesterday released a new single from your new album. Yeah. And uh, you sent me the full album. I've been listening to the full album, and all I can say is, wow. Thank you very much. Wow. Nowadays, because I have a herniated disc and all, uh, every morning I uh, at five thirty. I wake up, I take a walk mm -hmm. for half an hour to one hour, and uh, I put your album on the other day, and I was like, okay, I'm going in with this. Uh, I'm not too familiar, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not too familiar with your uh, earlier work uh, mm -hmm. as your, you know, as Isan, the artist. Mm -hmm. So I came in with absolutely no uh, predictions or anything, and I was completely blown away. It's uh, It's been a long time since I've, you know, I felt this feeling. It's not very, you know, when you get older, it's not very often yeah, you get yeah, impressed know, with, with new music, you know. But you, but you, you came into then with the perfect condition with no preconceptions. Yes, exactly. And uh, I also don't like, don't like to uh, describe music, mm -hmm. but it's like a, and I hate this word, rock opera. It's not a rock opera, it's a metal opera. Bl black metal opera, it, it just has everything in it. And I also don't like to say that it's like, oh, it reminds me a little bit of Devin Townsend, because it's not Devin Townsend, but the, uh, it just feels like you poured everything into this album, it feels like. It, that's what, how I feel it. I it, did. It, it was damn hard. Okay, so, <laughs> and listening to this album, and you can listen to the single right now, you will hear that there's a lot of things happening in this music. And, uh, yeah. well, in my opinion, I, I, I listen to it and I'm like, Dude, there's so much work behind this. Oh yeah, you was. have no idea how much. Like, <laughs> how has the whole process been for you in regards to this album? No, it, it was. Uh, this is a pandemic album. Okay. Uh, in many ways, so I had a had pandemic some time. product. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it was with, with all my my. This is my eighth uh, solo yes. uh, solo album. So uh, and I, I've always had this. Uh, you know, thing for experimentation, yes. you know, and also we, we talked about this when walking around here, this with uh, singling in on some, some core ideas. Yes. And especially since, you know, when you work alone and you don't have the kind of push-pull within the band setting, uh, it's even more important to, to create some, some because boundaries. You, because you don't have the other guy to dynamically yeah. work back and forth with. Yeah. So it's You don't have the other guy who says like, no, I don't like it. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. Which, uh, for the most part, is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but um, so so if, since the first solo album, mm -hmm. I have this one book, and I just do a write up okay. of what kind of album I want to make, and then I kind of build. It starts with a feeling of what kind of album I want to make, and then I try to put that into words and lyrical ideas and conceptual ideas and what kind of sounds I want. You know, sometimes I've, I did an album uh, some time back where I I just wanted to you know, throw all the orchestral sounds out okay. the window, which is kind of something that has stuck with me since yes. the first Emperor yes, record, absolutely. you know, and just do all analog synthesizers instead, you know, conceptual ideas that goes with the lyrical themes I want to explore and blah, yes. blah, blah. But f for this one, I thought, okay, this is my eighth one. You know, I, I've done a lot of experimentation. How about I go back to kind of the, the core elements okay. of what I want to do? And, it, you know, my background is like, extreme metal, yes. black metal, and, you know, trying to add, you know, the elements of orchestral, you know, horror movie soundtracks yep. into that, you know, Jerry Goldsmith, John Williams, Bernard Herrmann. I, I even like felt <laughs> some, some video game aspects in this as well, like, and video game music and almost a little bit of they, they probably anime have the music. They probably have the same influence because I'm, I'm, I've never p played video games. But no, but for, for me, it was like evoking <laughs> all these feelings of like, oh, the feelings I get when I play video games and mm -hmm. I'm like really, you know, 
um, involved in a game, and you know, the, everything's just, it's just like a movie, you know, it, yeah, it, yeah. it engulfs you and, you know, really encaptures you. And same thing with some anime and stuff like I mean, that. I'm, I'm glad you feel like that because that, that was kind of the intention. Yeah. Because uh, um, I've done conceptual things, mm -hmm. but as, I thought, okay, I'll go back to the roots mm -hmm. in a way, but just try to raise the bar subjectively, just on a very personal level, because I'm, I'm self-taught, never know music education at all, mm -hmm. but you know, fascinated with orchestral music and yes. all that. Okay, I could learn so much from this. So I decided to do you know full orchestral, with you know like a full symphony orchestra, yep. and not patches, but just like every single you know violins one, violin twos. Had you, did you have one violin guy that recorded like 13 times or like different tracks or was yes, it a complete? On, on top of that, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I did the, I, I worked quite closely with Spitfire Audio. Yes. Uh, with the, the, the BBC Symphony Orchestra for the oh. most part, but yeah. I have a, a lot of their other libraries that I kind of added in. Yes. Uh, there's some tune track percussion, you know, in there, but, uh, but uh, live percussion mm -hmm. in addition and also Chris Baum who did an amazing job, you know, uh, kind of overdubbing several times, you know, all violin ones right. and violin two parts. Yes. So it's like there, there's a blend, like a hybrid thing. But yeah. uh, in, in um, as I, th that was the idea, mm. uh, to do it properly. But I, instead of trying to, you know, to make metal music with some orchestral parts mm -hmm. blend in, it's, uh, uh, it's easier mm -hmm. in a sense. But then since I decided from the get-go that I'll write this and arrange the orchestral parts in a way so that they work within the context of the metal arrangement, mm -hmm. but also separately on its own. Yes. So, uh, uh, you know, shortening it down, I wrote the entire album as a piano short score, just with a piano sound. Okay. And then I arranged it for bass, guitars, and all that stuff. And then I arranged ah. the same music for orchestra and tried to, in some ways, you know, sometimes it, it matches up, but I tried to, uh, you know, like the single that is out now, The Pilgrimage of Oblivion. Yes. You know, the, it's probably one of the hardest songs on the album, but also it, the orchestral version of that is really mellow. Yes. Like, it's like really uh, low dynamics. Right. So I tried to, some of the idea was to try to explore a different emotional range mm -hmm. within the same exact music. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, I, I was, that was actually a question I had, like when you released the single, because you released it after I listened to the album, like, why did he pick this song? Like that has to be such a, the whole album is just, so dynamic mm -hmm. like it's it, it's definitely like a journey on it's so like how and that song like you said it's the hardest one but i don't think it's like a, the best representative of what the album is no but the, some of the reason this needed to be the first single it's not the first song on the album but it's, but it's early in the album yeah and uh, it's because um, i'm releasing uh these in this the singles in chronological order okay. as to the storylines. There is a plan. Yeah, yes. because there, there's. This is also where I went. The first time I've done like a proper conceptual okay. narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, so that the lyrics follow like a storyline from a like a novel synopsis okay. that I made. That for like, and then there's uh, the orchestral, orchestral version of the album uh, follows a, a separate storyline uh -huh. that is also blended in to the main storyline in okay. some kind of dream scenario. So it's, everything is very interlocked and um, the music videos for each of these, uh, you know, the metal versions yes. and uh, the orchestra, it is continuous, the, the different music videos that will follow, follow, okay. it's, it's, they will become together. Okay, way. so there is a plan. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a plan and much more plan than I have ever, ever had before. So, but, but, <laughs> so, was it different this time that you started writing on piano for this? Or is that just your general, like, this is where I start? Like, because like I said, when I hear it, it's like there's so much work behind this. I'm thinking as both a songwriter, obviously also the, the concept wise, like mm -hmm. you start with the concept, you write down in your book what you want, mm -hmm. uh, you start with the concept, then you write the piano or like the piano parts or get, get some kind of a, like, I'm just, at that point, I'm already fatigued. Like, if I would do it myself, like yeah, it's it, no, it's but, so much work. Yeah, it's much worse. But but then, it's kind of like a puzzle. I mean, yeah. as I said, the initial idea, this this sounds very metaphysical and presumptuous, but it's always been like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I don't know the music. No. You know, but it can take a while after I finish something, and then suddenly I get like a core feeling. Yes. That are like. 
and I kind of recognize that this this is a new album. Okay. And then I have to just, uh, it's like the raw material and you, it's in there and yeah. you kind of have to dig it out part by part. And that's conceptually and musically and everything. Okay. And and when I come to that and then, you know, from my write-ups and my kind of self-imposed limitations, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I start to build from there. And, and it's just since I needed, you know, the, the, the arrangements to to function mm -hmm. in both these versions, you know, and together. It, they had to interlock and then you kind of have to sketch out. It was like like a pencil drawing before mm -hmm. you color it in. Yeah, okay. You know, with the piano sketch. Right. And if it, if it, if it works well, just with a piano sound, it's like, you know, Beatles, you, know, you, you can of play course. the song on acoustic guitar and yeah. vocals and if it works there, you could blow it out. Yes. You know, it's like a vectorized logo or something. Do you feel that, uh, I mean, obviously you had a, a vision. Okay, this is what the, the, the album is going to be. Like how close, it, before you started writing, you have a vision. This is the concept, this is what. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have an vision of what the album will be. How close was is the end result to what you had in mind when you started? It's, uh, it's uh, to be honest, this is probably the closest I've ever gotten. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and, and, and this, how can I... I find it hard to talk about this, but you know, trying not to, to sound, you know, like a megalomaniac, <laughs> yes. you know. But but uh, but um, and it's, it has nothing to do with ego, no, you know, or prestige or anything. It's no. just a, on a personal level, you know. I'm closing in. I'm, I'm closing in on 50. Yeah, and I've been doing this since I was 16. Mm -hmm. You know, even before that, but that was, we signed to Candlelight when I was 16. Yes. 16, and to be in a position where I'm this excited, yeah. you know, about making. Yeah, music, you know, thrilled with all the stuff that I learned, and I can't, you know, you know the feeling when you, you know, the sequencer plays back something that you you don't know how it got there, but you yeah. can kind of take credit for it. Yes, you, absolutely. you know you did yeah. it, but you was you weren't present in a moment. It yeah. was like this flow thing, and uh, you know the way this has come together, just all the sounds. You know, Jens Bogren mixed the album yes. amazingly. Joel Dolly, who, who mm -hmm. mixed the, the orchestral version of the album, did an amazing job. And, uh, you know, I've been working, the visual artists that I've been working with for the artwork and for the videos and everything. Everything and, just and, comes together. And, and everybody who worked on the album uh, also got access to all my write-ups and okay. my storyboards and my, my, you know, mood boards and mm -hmm. all this. And they all kind of did different representations of it. But I think people will see that everything you know it links together yeah is it like we talked about when we walked around that it, it, it all points in the same direction yes and um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled how it came out and and this is from you know from a fan perspective yeah because I grew up on you know our maiden and King Diamond and this so for me uh, an album should be it's like almost like a building like when, mm -hmm. when you look at our maiden power slave mm -hmm. And you hear the Power Slave song, yep. you know, it makes sense, yep. you know, and, uh, and uh, if you, it makes so much sense and you really love it, mm -hmm. you can go into the, all the details and you can read lyrics and you can even learn something, yep. you know, and uh, you could see all the, in the graphics, you will see all the secret small symbols that he put in or the, or the, you know, special message on the inner rims of the right. vinyl, stuff like that. And this is, you know, in a similar way, I want my albums to be like that and for this one since I think uh, like if, if you listen to it like on the surface like mm -hmm. the building surface hopefully it's immediate and you can kind of get a kick out, out of that mm -hmm. but if you're so inclined you you can go inside yeah and it's not only uh, you know bare walls on the inside there's, yes. there, there's more you yeah. know for those who are who want to go deeper yeah so in in 2023 it's probably I've done everything wrong you know, with people's attention span, you know, yes. like 30, 30 seconds yes. at max. So everything is wrong. This is a not double album, it's a dual album on top of each other yes. with uh, all kinds of conceptual aspects and stuff that people have no time for. You know, I think that I think that was <laughs> that was probably the relief, you know, when I listened to the album, because like you said, you know, a lot of the you know, the, the market's so saturated with albums and songs and bands and, and videos, like in, in the field that I'm doing, there's just mm -hmm. so much videos to, to be seen if yeah. you're into that. And it was just a, such a relief to hear, you know, I come from, you know, I was sitting at home listening to full albums 
yeah. during the 90s. And, you know, I, I was waiting. I lo always loved the, the idea of a concept album. From start to finish, you would listen it through and you would get the big picture. Yeah. And I don't think I've had a concept album doing this for me in a long while because, you know, Ooh, why, would, why would... Concept albums today, they don't feel like concept albums. It's just another bunch of songs. I mean, it's like mm. when I write uh, uh, concept albums, I don't do this too often, though. But it's just another name of all the collection of songs that I'm releasing, <laughs> you know? So uh, it definitely felt like a movie. And since I was wa out there, okay, not really like licking your balls, but when I was out <laughs> walking, it's all it's dark here in Sweden yeah, at, yeah. at 5:30 in the morning, up until like 7:30. Uh, it's dark, and you know it's re really easy for me to envision the music as as a movie, and that's what I felt when I listened to it. It's definitely like watching a movie, and it had me really excited because uh, it. In the same way, I can get really excited for like a new Godzilla movie, or just mm. an ex as an example. So I just want to, you know, really oh, commend you. you for that. It's it's really something. And, but uh, but I, I really appreciate that, and I think it's it's kind of a, a great fe feedback for me to have because, and I've you know a few others that I've played the album to, mm -hmm. even just the orchestral version, yep. and. Uh, they didn't people who didn't get any information of what it's about yep. it just just the music mm -hmm. you know and i said like this this feels like a movie yep. you know the, it feels like there's there's a story behind it yes even just in the music mm -hmm. and from the bits and parts you can pick out from the lyrics and that made me feel uh, you know uh, it was a success yes you know that all the work i put into i thought oh, like why do i i bother it's, yes. it's only for me yeah you know because no one will ever be bothered to, right. to go into the details yes. and see all the details I put into it which which is fine it's, yeah. it's it, you're not supposed to you know but I I, I have this um, yeah the only rule of thumb I, I have I think when I make music now is that because I've never been I learned that early on to be in sync mm -hmm. with your audience yes it's impossible yeah the and but I've been very privileged to, to have an audience yeah to, uh, and to do this you know this became my work yeah and I think the, the only way I can kind of give back, if, if, if that makes sense, is to be as excited and as honest and as, you know, passionate about the, what, what I do as yeah. when I first started out. And I honestly do my very, very best every time I make an album. Sometimes, you know, it resonates with people, sometimes not. Yeah. But I, I think if I've tried to, at any point, tried to, to kind of steer this towards some kind of yes. commercial purpose you know i would be shooting myself in the foot yeah. because i think for whatever reason people who are into metal music mm -hmm. you know it's it's different it's not like just background stuff yeah you know we we are dedicated to the style you could see it in the way we dress and yes. the way we look and everything so it goes very deep with, with it's a kind of a niche genre like this yeah and i think whether it's Consciously or subconsciously, an audience will notice when you're not honest. Absolutely. You know, so, so that's the only way to go. You just. I've, I've been, have you read the Rick Rubin book about no. creativity? No. Highly recommended. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I felt that, you know, he uses different words, but I could. Re it really resonated with how I see things. Just like, it's it's a super personal thing. Of course. To to just and you just have to be make it the best that it can be yeah. with the resources and where you're at at that time. I, I think that people and and fans and listeners they appreciate focus. Yeah. So focus in, like you said, you, and we talked about this before as well in regards to like uh, you know my guitar brand and all that. Like you need to have focus. Hmm. Like you, you can't do everything because then people will see that, you know, it's not oh what the, they're trying to do everything here. And yeah. it's the same with music, in my opinion. I mean, people follow you because you have focus. And uh, I think that's maybe a little bit lost today because a lot of bands want to do everything. And, you know, everyone's sounding more and more produced. And, you know, everyone's yeah, using all the elements just to kind of like, you know, okay, to widen an audience. But at the same time, if everyone's widening the audience, the focused ones will be, they will come up on top. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know about that necessarily, but but yeah, I, I get <laughs> I get you get your point. But I, I think at the same time, I, I, if if you at some point do sc scroll through my back catalog, yes. I think a lot of people would perhaps uh, uh, accuse me of being too much all, all over the place, you know? Because well, I'm, you no, know, but do, do, yeah, but but I, that that's the point. I think people confuse this with uh, you know the 
variety mm -hmm. and focus. It's mm -hmm. not. It's it's not in two directions. I mean, I've, I've used this example a hundred times, but times. But you know, when Lemmy died. Yes. You know. Rock legend. Yeah. You know, but for being, Lem Lemmy kill Mister. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, uh, unapologetically through his whole career, yeah, like ACDC, yeah, you know, but then you know, I think it was shortly after David Bowie dies, yeah. rock legend, but a chameleon musically, yeah, but never at the integrity of being David Bowie, no, but he could sound like David Bowie in so many ways, yeah, and I think there's two different parts. This is like ACDC or Radiohead, right? You know, I well, you know, because I have listened to uh, the earlier stuff as well. The, mm. All I hear is that it, it is you and your focus, but the sound is, is experimenting a little yeah, bit, yeah. which is a completely different thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. and uh, I must say, it's probably the first time I've heard like you know black metal elements with like a prog type of sound with less gain on guitars, and it's uh, it's 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 really nice. It's really pleasant to listen to. Uh, like Thank if you. It, I mean, obviously you can go back and listen to Emperor and you know all of that. It's you not, get not it's so like, pleasant. But well, <laughs> well, it's pleasant in a different way. It's yeah, yeah, it's more it. anger. But this is like, uh, you know, my my wife Louise, she she's very much into stuff like this. It's like it's a soundscape uh, of of prog and and black metal, and then you have the screaming, obviously, mm -hmm. which is very like it really focuses the music. But the sound can be, you know, you're yeah, basically yeah. making. It's a more accessible sound in a way because it's. Uh, I don't know what I'm going with this, but I just feel like this is. It feels new to me when oh, I listen to you. it. So, you know, I wouldn't say you're all over the place listening to the, the first albums you made. It, it really is you, but you're just experimenting with sound. Yeah, and, and that that's kind of a, again just my my uh, general vibe. I, I don't go into an album wanting to sound like someone else. Yeah. I just want to sound like me in a different way. Mm -hmm. In a way, so that again goes back to the the core feeling that I, I want to be as, exci as excited making albums mm. at 48 yeah. as when I was 16. Right. If I'm not, you know, I should probably do something else. Yes. You know, because it's a huge privilege. We we both know that it's a, it's not a, a human right to no. be doing rock music. Absolutely. You know, that's a huge privilege, and we saw that for all the people as well. Music in general, during the pandemic, you know, we we were the first to go. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a luxury. Yeah, both ways. Yes. You know. So, so is uh, the new album your magnum opus? Uh, so far. So far. Yeah. yeah. This, yes. I, I, honestly, I, I feel this is. Do you think that the, you probably won't gonna notice until after it's been released? Uh, like for yourself. I mean, I'm not take, I'm not talking about success or no, like no, the, no. what people because obviously albums grow on you. And maybe, like you said before, you can leave an album and be like, okay, it's done. Mm -hmm. And then you sit back and then you start reflecting on the album. Yeah. So uh, maybe it takes a couple of months before it, you well, realize. It, it, takes, it usually takes more than that. Right now, I, I'm convinced this is the, the on a personal level, yeah. the most successful thing I've done. Yes. Because, again, you have an idea of what it can be. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, you feel like, okay, it's almost like a percentage success rate, yeah. you know, of how close you got to, mm. to to the original ID. And this time, I really, you know, got really close to that mark right. in, in my, you know, just compared to what I, I intended to do. Yeah. And um, I, I feel this is it's, it's like through my my career. You know, I'm so old now, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but you feel like you have some some kind of uh, plateaus. Yes. Call that. So, so when I start my solo career, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 all, all my three first albums start with an A, because okay. I, I want to. I thought of this as uh, a slow start. Okay. I, I want to give myself three albums mm -hmm. to kind of build a, a new musical platform. Yes. So I kind of started out again, like with a lot of heavy metal, mm -hmm. Maiden, King yeah. Diamond-ish influences on the first one, and became more more progressive on the second one, and then I ended up with. Uh, the conclusion to that trilogy was off, uh, with an album called Officer, mm. with eight-string guitars and yeah. Jürgen Munk be on with saxophone and all this, and uh, and uh, I felt okay, I I I found some new plateau. Yes, I have a, some new solid ground that yeah. I can build from. Yeah, and then you know I built on that and, uh, and I felt, uh, I think was that my yeah my sixth solo album um, I was uh, Arctis. Mm. I felt that that's quite different, but I felt. That was another kind of uh, landmark 
yeah, from me in a, in a way. And now we've done an album after that and some, some different uh, uh, EPs with some different conceptual mm -hmm. ideas. And now I feel again, you know, with this uh, rather big scale yeah. uh, pro, you know, production of this new album, mm. that I have reached one of those kind of landmarks okay. in a way. Yeah. So let's see where... But, but the thing is, again, like, I've been so excited to do this, yeah. you know, and I learned so much yeah. and really surprised myself as how, at how much I could learn and kind of grow mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in the process. And I was like, I can do this at, at 48. Yeah. You know, I'm just looking forward to the next one. Yeah, yeah right, right. You know, to, to, the you, hunger still. Yeah, the, the hunger to, yeah. to, to, to re kind of feed the hunger in a sense, yeah. That's awesome. It's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Did you ever feel that uh, you had these kind of plateaus when uh, with the Emperor, uh, with Emperor, for instance? Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. I think if the first Emperor album for, for me is, um, because it has some new songs, but it yeah. also has re-recordings of songs that we did okay. on the first EP. Oh, okay, okay. So it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, getting everything together in okay. a sense and it was like it was recorded in one one session oh okay okay yeah, yeah. But, but it was just like re-recordings of the yes. same songs like we gathered everything we had so for, for me the the first proper mm -hmm. emperor album was uh, was uh, anthems yes which was the second one because yeah. that's the first one that we had some experience i mean when we recorded the eclipse yeah uh, i was you know i was 17 most yes. of the songs were done when i was 16 you yeah. know you don't have any experience no you know, you don't know what you're doing, but you know, we did the keyboard, I did the keyboard parts, and you know, you, you, you we were in Greg Holland Studios yes. with Pitten, and you know, it, it opened some some perspectives of oh, what you could do. Yes. So when going into writing the second album, you know, we had some experience, and uh, I got my first uh, uh, you know computer mm -hmm. with the uh, Cubase and nice. You know, some some uh, some proper more proper gear. Yeah. And. Uh, and uh, so it, that was like the first album that was really written as an album. First, so I feel album, that was first album was 94 or? Yeah, we recorded in 93, but it okay. was uh, out in 94, 95, okay. depending on. And album two? Uh, is 97. 97, okay. I'm just thinking like, okay, where, where are we computer wise? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. late 90s, because I remember using Cakewalk and it's, you know, on PC, it was yeah. terrible. So Cubase, we're, it was okay to work yeah, yeah, with Cuba, back in the day? Cuba, Cubase uh, VST. Of course, okay. there, were, there were no audio. No. It was just, just media. Okay, okay. But I, I just remember when we recorded the first Emperor EP. Yeah. Uh, the, back in... Yeah, 92. Yeah. But I saw the Atari. All right, you right. Know, the Atari yeah. S1000. Yeah. And they had some kind of... I, I'm not sure if it was called Cubase, but I think it was Steinberg who made them. Okay, yeah. And I felt like, fuck, if I had one of those, <laughs> I could do anything. Yes. You know? <laughs> and then I eventually... I That's got, how I, I felt with the four track, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I, like. the, the, this is the funniest thing, but, uh, because my, my mother used to um, work in the bank. Okay. And it was in some kind of... You know, the, the, when a business goes broke or something, yep, yep. and they sell something? Yes. I, I started playing early, so I already played guitar. Yeah. I had a, you know, like an electric organ and stuff like that. But, and she brought home this thing. And I, I remember, still remember this excitement. I didn't know what it was at first, but it had faders and knobs on it. Right. And it, it was a Fostex four-track recorder. That's the one I had, yeah. Fostex. Yeah, amazing. And <laughs> I, I, so I, I started recording my first songs when, you know, and ping-ponging. Yeah, 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 you double, yeah, 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 you yeah. double the tracks. Yeah, at, at 12, yeah. you know. Oh, that's cool. So, so I started early with that, but then, then so technology to, to for writing music has always been, you know, very exciting to yeah. me. But I'll, I'll I, this, this is a total round trip, but, <laughs> but the um, first time was in Japan. Yeah. Lepers, uh, yeah. in the beginning, they were my backing band. Yes. You know, and, and uh, Older than Board Cold Star yep. was such a you know big yeah, drop, big drop, you know, amazing. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. But uh, so he was invited to to, to Roland in Japan, ah, okay, okay. And we were both invited, mm -hmm. you know. So we were giving a full grand tour of all of the Roland nice. factories and their museum where they have everything. Right. Oh, know. with the old uh, big synth that they have. Yeah, yeah with the organ yeah, thing. Yes, yeah, 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 and all the. I've pedals. also been there actually. Yeah, for, yeah, well, sorry, amazing place, there. and you could oh. see it, like the countryside with the the boats outside with oh, the water. Oh, with the lake, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Amazing, but uh, but at the end of that, we got to, to meet one of the CEOs, mm -hmm. and apparently he was part of the team that built the JV 1080. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that with the orchestral uh, card is 
the Emperor Sound. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Because right. I got one of those because for the first Emperor album we borrowed uh, uh, from Mortis, our yep. previous bass, but the, the was it XP10 keyboard mm -hmm, yes. from Roland, and it had a lot of those sounds. That is, we borrowed that for the first album, and I, in the meantime, I got the JV1080 with your Kestrel card, mm -hmm. and that hooked up to Cubase. So, I'm, I'm, so, so some of your listeners might have heard, we always do this outro thing right. for, for Emperor, which is called Opus of Satana. It's like mm -hmm. a, a, an orchestral mock-up of the Inuel Satana okay. the song we have. And that is how I learned Cubase. Mm. We had, I had the song, but I just you know, made this orchestral mock-up with this okay. sound module. So, so um, but it was really funny to, to like that, at that point, that was like 20 years later. Yeah. And like, that was my starting point. And 20 years later, I come to Japan and I meet, you know, one of the guys who right, developed who made that. What, what became, you know, like such a core part of yeah. my career. <laughs> so oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was a very uh, cool moment. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, where were we? Yeah, where were we? we? We were talking about plateaus. Yes, in Emperor, and uh, yeah, so so I think yeah, anthems, mm -hmm. a plateau in that sense that it, it felt like you know it, it, it was a written album, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, from beginning to end. Yeah. And, um, Did you already at that point like work conceptual, in terms of not having an idea of uh, not so much. It, it was it was more kind of uh, honing in on the ideas that we kind of built. That okay. kind of uh, almost that uh, landscape -y thing mm. that has always been part of of the emperor's thing. I think. All right. And and then uh, in the end. You know, we, we did just two, two more albums after that, and, yeah. and for Prometheus, the last one, we already came to that point where I eventually just wrote everything and yeah. recorded it, most of it in my studio, and the, it was kind of, and the other guys were doing Cyclone already, and, yeah. and so we were kind of creatively. Right. So that, that was basically <laughs> why? You stop with Emperor. Yeah, we, we you just, just felt that you were we, done. We, yeah, no, yeah we, we, it wasn't really, you know, we weren't interlinked yes, yeah. creatively in the same way, and we, uh, we could say a lot of things about Emperor, but like this uncompromising element yeah. Yeah. Uh, was a big part of it. And yeah. I think both me and Samos, we we really cherish. If, if we can proud, be proud of anything, is that we, there was no no compromise. Yes, and that is something again. You know, it has to be real. Yeah, you know, and um, and come come from that. Sounds very old school, but yeah. Very cool. It's true too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Dude, Diegard, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Hope the coffee was good. It was good. Did you have any even? I didn't yeah, see I didn't you know. sip. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Awesome. Uh, the new album is out in February. And uh, the, then, Isan, then self-titled. Self-titled. It's self-titled. That's, that's, that, so that's what I mean. It is the magnum opus already. You knew this. No, but, no, but <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to call it. But and it, felt, it, it felt like it was such a core yes. idea for what I do yeah. and and when I, I, I said it's going to be self-titled I was like oh that's pretty bold and I was like oh is that is that a thing I didn't I didn't know it was such a statement uh, well if it's a really good album it's a great statement hmm. so if it's a shit album uh, yeah maybe it's okay. a bad statement fingers crossed yeah so no it's a good <laughs> album you, you don't have to worry about anything about that so thank you, thank you so much for Dude, having me thank you so much but pure pleasure you're always welcome to come here thank, thank you. you so much <laughs>